The Tomb Raider already rose. She rose in the original game, that was kind of the point. Why is she only now just rising in this sequel? Is she like a loaf of bread? Was she, was she in the oven for the first game? And now she's only just started to rise in the second game? Hmm? Is the series an allegory for bread? Does that mean that the next game will be Baking of the Tomb Raider? Rise of the Tomb Raider, confusing title aside, is a very fine action-adventure game indeed, and a damn well-executed sequel that nearly surpasses the original, but fails in one or two places to make me still prefer the original game a bit more. Either way, it's a solid continuation of Lara's escapades that didn't exceed expectations for me, but made me really damn happy that I played it all. And you know something, after my Resident Evil 7 video, to save anybody any more upset and to stop me stressing out about it, this is not going to be a spoiler-free video. I'm not going to make these videos spoiler-free anymore. I, I guess I guess I just can't do that. Um, there's only so much you can show without upsetting someone at some point. So it's easier to write, easier to talk about, and you all know what you're getting into now. So apologies for any ruined experiences, but here we go. Let's just get on with it, alright? This game story. He follows the simple premise of Lord Croft, Lara's dad, apparently going insane many years ago looking for a divine source of power that supposedly gives eternal life, protected by a supposed prophet from centuries ago that evaded the tyranny of a group of assholes. Nobody believed Lord Croft was telling the truth, and many people believed he committed suicide out of complete insanity looking for the thing. So the story follows Lara not only figuring out if her late dad was indeed insane and just lied to her constantly throughout her entire childhood, but also if this thing he was looking for was a real thing, and even if he died by his his own hand, and in the end she hopes to restore faith in her family and restore their shamed name. And that stuff in my opinion is great, it's very personal, very simple, and has a great pace to it with a good sense of discovery. And this story feels very similar to the original Tomb Raider game stories, you know, not the best stories in the world, but a decent motivator to keep you playing. It even has a couple of really good plot twists with some of the characters that you meet along your journey in this game. But then there has to be a baddie, doesn't there? There has to be a baddie, and this baddie is baddie. And when I say this baddie is baddie, I mean this baddie is shit. The secretive group against the Prophet all those years ago trying to steal this hidden divine source is actually still kicking around in the modern day <laughs> under the name of Trinity. And yeah, it's initially surprising to find out at the start of the game that Lara's closest parent figure Anna was in on everything, but then when you get over that decent shock, you then get Constantine. The most stale, badly scripted, boring, destiny motivated, and unthreatening forgettable shit nugget I've seen in a long time. Basically, half the story I loved, but the military stuff and everything else to do with Trinity was in my opinion pretty shit. It didn't really need it in my opinion, there's nothing interesting, no mystery, no decent conflict, and it makes the whole story end so suddenly it's actually hilarious, never clearing up the original driving force to the story, not clearing up Lara's personal family demons, and despite what you expect, not even ending Trinity's plight whatsoever, which you just finished off your fucking self, meaning that the game never really actually ends. The good and the bad stories don't mix here at all, and it's a huge shame. And that's because the other good story elements weave around the gameplay, and the gameplay here is top notch. You have everything here from the first game, like the campfire checkpoints dotted in big open areas where you can upgrade your stuff, thrilling running, climbing and jumping segments that truly made me feel queasy from the heights that you can reach on precarious and stomach churning obstacles, the incredible optional tombs hidden away within the larger open areas that you can explore to not only solve amazing puzzles but find additional abilities for Lara as well as upgrades for weapons, and the fact that you can revisit areas later on with weapons that you get later on in the story, yeah it's all here and with very fluent, quick and flexible controls with zip lining and climbing around. And in many places those elements are indeed improved, like the tombs in my opinion, which are now a lot bigger, and with a lot more imaginative physics puzzles and item and weapon combination puzzles that are never explained to you directly and make you feel like a genius for solving them. And the size of the game is dramatically bigger than the first game, but not filled with fluff or voided empty space. Each area and hidden cave is chock full of useful hidden goodies, secret maps to reveal them on your map, exotic animals to hunt for crafting materials, and they have all been designed in the knowledge that enemy encounters need to be constantly interesting and different whenever you run into them. Them. And those dim graphics, man, it's so wonderfully pretty and like Uncharted adds a lock to the spectacle while still making clear visual distinctions between threats. It's not just pretty action set pieces that will never actually put you in danger and just let you look at the particles and fire renders. Everything visual is a part of the world and in the parts where it looks like you're not playing, you actually are and you need to avoid all the shit happening around you and it makes it all the more immersive, ready for the moments when you venture off towards a secret cave only to find your first fucking bear to fight as you run around in panic trying not to have your throat ripped out. 
Moments of surprise and terror like this make the game, if you ask me. And if anything, I'm sad more animals and human simultaneous encounters weren't included. That could have been very interesting. Everything else is here, though, and pretty great. The stealth is actually extremely beneficial from how tough enemies are to fight head on, but not an easy thing at all to pull off, requiring constant strategy changes, movement, and distractions in order to be effective. You can't camp in this game at all. The control also helps with that as you bounce around these treetops, landing kill after kill, and landing on enemies from above if you get really good. Crafting with things in the world are back and are responsible for not only types of ammo, but health and even weapon extensions, making the world a more rich tapestry to explore alongside things like buried coins you can trade in with an outsider for some of the most useful and badass upgrades in the game. And like before, the bow can be your best friend if used correctly. It's a silent killer and can be used for distractions, but it's also very slow to fire and not too powerful if you mess up with it. But then you get the unbelievable arrow types from the explosions to flames to poisonous gas, which was my absolute favorite weapon in the game bar none. Look at all of these group kills you can get with this stuff. And yes, the gun battles around the tomb raiding are indeed exciting and need even more movement than stealth, especially towards the end of the game when a mysterious enemy type finally confronts you and kicks your ass if you aren't careful. I also loved how it took more mystical and supernatural routes on occasion to make it again feel like a classic Tomb Raider, but also twist it with a modern realistic spin, like the Baba Yaga encounter for instance. It's awesome and so ridiculously out there it can't possibly be real within the world of the game, but then Tomb Raider <laughs> has done ridiculous things like that in the past, so is it real? The thing is though, this stuff is really good, really really good stuff, but I don't think it's as good as the original Tomb Raider reboot. Maybe it's the fact that the story is a little bit messy, maybe it's the fact that a lot of these ideas were already explored in the original Tomb Raider reboot and they were very fresh there but they don't feel quite as impactful as they do now. But I have a feeling it's more to do with the fact that a couple of the mechanics here don't sit well with me. With the size of the game like tripled from before, there's a lot more to do here but there are a few things that never really reward your time within the main game to do. The challenges for instance where you shoot hidden objects or burn hidden posters or ring hidden bells on high towers are very fun to do, don't get me wrong, but barely give you any reason or benefit to do them aside from credits for extra stuff outside the game I never even touched. The shooting here felt a bit off for me as well. I mean, it works, but it's a little bit more stiff with the analog controls compared to the smoother frame rates and slicker control responsiveness in the original reboot. And the ending portions of the game, along with the story bollocks, felt so damn rushed it was embarrassing. You get campsite after campsite after campsite checkpoint every minute or so. So many XP points at once so that you can fully level up your stats before the final boss, but you only have the stats that you didn't care about at all left to level up. And the last boss is not only boring, but doesn't test you on anything you've learned at all in the main game as you do the shittiest cat and mouse chase with no weapons at all as Constantine is able to spot you every five seconds even when you're nowhere near him. Also try this out, when you're on the last boss level, hit the fucker repeatedly with melee attacks and it doesn't do anything. The most bullshittingly and unfair way to kill him with a backwards stealth attack which if you haven't played it you won't understand how frustrating it is, that's the only way you can get him but no repeated axe strikes to the face, he doesn't care. Thanks for the consistency. <laughs> Apart from that stuff though, this game in my opinion does a load more right than it does wrong, and it's a joy to play from start to end overall. So you know what, I'm going to round this off with an 8 out of 10. If it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy frick of birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Ay, 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 ay.